you must be laughing your heads off. You came, you guys got things done. By moving here, you got all the mask mandates wiped out. I can walk in DC, now wear a mask. But we're good. we're not achieving nothing. I think it's funny because they say how it's, you know, the, the mandates are all going down and COVID's contained, so why does he need the emergency powers? That's what they're saying, right? Yeah. They're making the case for these guys, you know? But I, I just think it's funny. So, so, so how long, what do you think you'll break up or what's the plan now? I don't know. What the, they don't, we find out day to day. Okay. You know, right now it's, you know, they've got families in tents and things, so they're trying to find some better accommodations because of the cold. Okay. I know they've uh, got some controlled temperature trailers and stuff that they're moving people to and stuff so they can, can stay out of No, because I've been reading how you guys are going to do close down the Capitol, jam up the Beltway. No, no. These guys aren't going to go on national television and go out and shut something down. No. You know what I mean? They're not going to make their names known and then do something illegal. You know, it's just crazy. Well, and more important than that, I'm, I'm headed towards the Ukraine. Uh, I'm going to Italy tonight and then over to Ukraine. And, you know, I'd like to do something, you know, the solidarity of you guys and the Ukrainian truckers. I mean, you've yeah. had it tough, but you, these guys are bringing supplies and time. Yeah. Yeah, these guys, too, they, they are passionate about that stuff, you know, and I know a lot of them have, you know, had some, you know, we're melancholy about trying to raise awareness right now with what just happened and everything, too, you know what I'm saying, as far as, but... Your essential things service. happen. We, had, we already had the wheels rolling on. I know they already had the wheels rolling for okay. this, and then, and then that happens. So now it's a, no. you know, that's why you always got to be ready to adjust. I guess you know what I mean because there's always those options, you know, to, to, to see the bigger picture. Sometimes you know. Yeah, I guess when you know things happen, you're there and delivering. You can't just stop working. Right. All right. Oh, oh this is great. So, Fred, the the, the, main, the media, like the national TV channels, the local channels, didn't really get that this has more to do with the film Convoy, Chris Christopher said, in celebrating truck driving and trucking. Well, it's, it, it's a big event to bring drivers together, I believe, too. I think that a lot of drivers, just the, the whole solidarity thing, yeah. with, you know, you know, having each other's back, Yeah. I think it, it's, there's a lot of camaraderie around it like that, because most of these guys live and breathe trucking, so they're very familiar with the movie Convoy, and it's it maybe in some ways even been inspirational, you know. And how how welcoming have these towns been? I mean, they sound like... Everyone has welcomed the drivers, and that's, that's what was so amazing to the drivers on the way across for me, because I started in California and came all the way across with the Convoy, and uh, I was amazed at the outpouring from the public. I did not expect any of it. It really made Convoy stressful on us, because... <laughs> Every few miles, there's people everywhere. Yeah. And so you're watching constantly for people, but you're also watching the traffic. And, yeah. and people are slowing up and down because yeah. of the mountain for the people in the overpasses. Yeah. And when you have 2,000 miles of that nonstop, it was very hectic, you know. Uh, but very rewarding. Yeah. And uh, so many of uh, these veteran drivers told me, you know, I cried today. I couldn't believe the outpouring of support, you yeah. know, for us. But you're the organizer of the 10-4 annual event on the National Mall, though. Every year we see the trucks on the mall. And also, you are very interesting. You're a civilian truck driver. You drive a truck, not for commercial use, but as a personal vehicle. Yeah. Well, it's more of a remembrance of my father. My father was killed in a truck-related accident. And that's how I got involved, kind of advocating and helping the drivers. I don't, I don't do anything to speak for the drivers because I'm not in the industry yeah. currently. But... I, I, what I do is I work for a driver charity to help drivers have the resources to, you know, uh, you know, fight on, fight their own issues. Okay. Or, or, you know, come together to help improve the, their working conditions. You know. Okay. And then here we're in Hagerstown is a is where it's, it's a major center of big truck fire, the Mack truck owned by Renault Volvo. So this is quite, you know. Right. Yeah. You know, quite yeah. apropos to have this uh, gathering of uh, truck. Yeah. Yeah. So that's we've always, you know, in the years, and when they've been doing these things, always used Hagerstown as kind of a launching, you know, to go into D.C. Everywhere. Fire, power, 